You don't need to look at my ugly face, but we're with Brent Sp Spider-V. He has made a game that I have talked about before in great detail, Techno Bowl. It is an arcade unplugged football game, and uh, you know I'm a sucker for a really good sports game. So Brent, why don't you teach us how to play this, and we'll give it a go. All right. So uh, the first thing, it's either seven on seven or eight on eight. Uh, you can play with or without skills, and each player's jersey number is actually the first number is their skill rating. So this player is a three, he's a four, he's a five. Doesn't matter what the second number is. Both of these are sixes. That's a seven. That's a four. Okay. So that number. That first number is actually how far the player can move, so he can move seven spaces, six spaces, five spaces, four. Double that is how far they can throw. So he can throw up to 14. If he throws within seven, he gets a plus one bonus. Same thing, up to 12 spaces, he can throw up to eight. Um, so we'll talk about movement real quick. For movement, if you're just in the open, every other diagonal after the first has a single one penalty. So the first one is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, so it's every other one. Every other one. And even if you break it up, it would be like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it gives you kind of like the old school D&D pattern yeah. spread on it. Exactly. Uh, moving out of a space is what you're charged for. So players threaten all eight squares around them. Stepping into this, nothing, it's just one. But stepping out of a threatened square costs you two per player threatening. So here, stepping out would be two. Two guys were threatening him, it'd be four. If there were three players starting to face, it would be six to step out, I could still move seven. Mm -hmm. If I have the football, the pixel football, <laughs> it's it's three to step out for guy threatening. So three, two guys on me, six to step out. So when we're looking at player skills, the lower the number is, even though that guy's slow, he's actually pretty strong and powerful, so he's good at things like blocks, shoves, tackles. Higher skill players are good at things like juking, throwing the ball, uh, spin move, shakes. So let's say a three wants to block a five. You compare the first two numbers, and since lower is better for power moves, he's going to get a plus two to his dice roll. And that's where we talk about the skill check system. When you roll the dice, after modifiers, if you get a 10 or better, it's a total success. You successfully do what you wanted to do, but the other guy gets a free activation with any player. I mean, you get a free activation with any player on your team. A seven, eight, or nine after modifiers is a partial success. You do what you want to do, but the other guy gets a half move rounded up with any player on his team. A six or less will be a failure. They can actually reverse what you were trying to do, and they get a full activation with their player. And what a full activation is, you can either move up to your full movement, take an action, or you can move up to half of your movement, round it up, and take an action. So it's an either situation on this. Um, blocks, like I said, straight back or either side. Free follow-up, ignoring all threat. At an angle, same thing, at the back or either side, free follow-up. And you get bonuses for people threatening the person at a one-to-one -one ratio, so that would be plus one, plus two. You stop counting all pluses at three. So if I have three blocking, if I was plus two, one is plus three, we're done. No okay. more counting. And let's say that this guy over here brings in a couple of negatives, that counts him down. Now you can, let's say I got a three block and a four, that's at plus one. If I have that player's card on the bench, I can pull it to get bonuses at a one-to-one -one ratio, so that would be plus two, plus three. But what you can't do is you can't say, oh, I've got plus one, minus two. I can't then go beyond to get beyond four. Right. So count all your pluses up, including your bench. Stop counting at three. Count all your minuses up. Then you're done. Throwing the ball is a simple skill check. If I want to throw up to 14 spaces down the field, it's just a 2d6 dice roll. 10 are better to be, I mean, 7 are better to be six, successful. 10 are better to get a free activation. If he's within 7 spaces, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, I get plus 1 to the roll. And once again, I can pull those cards off the bench at a 1 to 1 ratio to get bonuses to the throw. Okay. Um, there are free activations you can do as part of a move action. So one of those is a handoff. If a player has the ball and another player moves adjacent to him, 
So he moves in, say, one, two. He can take the hand off for free and keep moving. If either player is threatened, you just make what's called a sport check. And that's where you roll 2d6 and hope you don't roll a double. If you roll a double like that, play stops and it's a fumble, and then we would uh, resolve the fumble. Okay. Um, same thing, if you throw the ball to an open spot instead of a player, run underneath it, make a sport check, no doubles, you're fine, you keep moving and roll on. Um, and that's the basics of actually skill checks. We won't get into the other skills, these are the basics you need, blocking, okay. tackling, uh, throwing the ball, handoffs, and other than that, it's all about how we set up formations and build plays. Okay. One question. Yes, sir. Can you move and throw? Yes, as long as it's not over half of your movement. So, if this was my quarterback number 70 and right. I had the ball, I can move up to half of my movement, round it up, as long as I don't cross the line of scrimmage. So I could move one, two, three, four, and now throw. Okay. All right. So it would affect my accuracy. So, we'll set up right here. I'll move uh, over here so we can be in front of the camera. So, and I'm going to move these cards out of the way. There we go. So, on offense, you have to have a guy to snap the ball. That skill number rating is how far back he can snap. So, you can pass someone up to four spaces back. Okay. Your first two players you place have to be placed on either side of him and within two spaces. So, I could do that, that, offset. Now, later I can smash more guys in, but this is my bare minimum. Mm -hmm. I then have to have a guy to snap the ball to. I can have him here or up to four spaces back since his skills are four. And once you're done with that, I can place as many guys as I want on the line of scrimmage, okay. as many as I want in this slot or motion lane. I just can't put a guy in the diagonals behind him hiking the ball. And then I have as many up to four guys in the backfield back here. So I can, you know, do a little offset shotgun and put a guy out here. Or I can run doubles to the left. I can empty the backfield out and do trips on this side. Mm -hmm. Whatever I like. Defense, they have to have a guy threatening the guy snapping the ball and any two players on either side that are within those two spaces. So at this point they can put one here, one here, they're done. They can now sit up anywhere on this side of the ball, okay. any formation they want. The only restriction is, is if they want to line up on the line of scrimmage, not threatening someone, they would have to threaten every other player to one-to-one -one if I had something like that before they could move into the open. Okay. So if we were in actual play right now, I would have one minute to set up my formation on offense, one real world minute, we set the timer. If I don't get done in time, Rob would get the finish setting up for me. Okay. Defense has one minute to set up their formation, one minute real world time, same thing. Doesn't finish his, I set up for him. And then we'll go to our player cards and we'll have one shared minute to build our play. So you have two cards for every single player in the game. Mm -hmm. I'll, uh, put them up like that. Has their player number in the top left on the pixel guy and on the bottom. So when they're on the rack, you can see them on the front or the back row. And all you're going to do, you're going to stack five cards in the order that you want to activate the players with the top card being the first one that you're gonna pull. We both do that, we have one minute to do that. If the other player doesn't finish, you get to take cards from their rack line and shove them in their hand to represent uh, <laughs> chaos in the huddle while they're calling the play. And then we have an opportunity to motion for the play and we would pull our cards and start revealing. And that's the basics of how you play. And the game pretty much runs itself after that just based off those partial successes and full successes and failures because there's constant movement on the field and pulling. And of course, once you get comfortable with that, you uh, have all sorts of skills you can add in for the various players. Christian, okay. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, Okie dokie there. And Deacon Holmes are like uh, for the kittens. You have uh, Harry Danders. No relation to Barry Sanders. Jamal Child. Yes. <laughs> and so those guys all have you know special rules that allow them to do something different, break the rules of the game, do things like you know stiff arms, uh, special intercept abilities, QB read, pocket passer. Uh, over 26 skills in the game, mixed up on all the teams to give you a different feel. Nice. It, 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 this just absolutely blows me away. I'm, I'm so glad that this got funded and is out there. So, you want to try a couple plays? Yeah, let's do it. All right, let's do it. I'll start on offense because uh, it's generally easier to have your yeah, first play no on problem. defense. Um, we will not run the timer because it's Rob's first time playing, so we're Give him a, I ain't afraid. We'll give him an extra couple. I ain't I'll give afraid. you an extra minute, Rob. Okay. Give you an extra minute. Hey, look at you. All right. 
All right, let me so, make sure everybody lines up. Okay, perfect. So I've got my guy here. He's gonna hike the ball. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm actually gonna change it up here. I'm gonna do these players. I've got a guy I'm gonna hike the ball to. I've got another player down here. What we're doing now, I'll tell you guys about a few more rules that happen once the play starts. Okay. Um, while Rob's setting up. Yeah, I'm actually going to do a little favor for everybody and just, because you're not going to score, so I'm just going to. Right, just zoom in down here. <laughs> 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 so, a, a couple of things that happen. Once during the play, both players have an opportunity to do something called an adjustment. We just take one of these little tokens and put it on their card to show they've done it. And what that allows you to do is when I have a player's card up, if I say I'm making an adjustment, that player and any other player on my team can move up to half their movement rounded up. The only restriction is they can't start with the ball, but they can end with the ball. Okay. So that allows you to do things like if I've got two players to move them both in like on a blitz or drop back in double coverage or get a lead blocker and a running back going out on a sweep. Right. Um, let you recover from things like that. So that's an adjustment. Just can't start or walk and end with it. Uh, the other thing is, is when he and I start revealing our cards, we'll talk about it during the play. Defense always has the option to swap out to a read and react. Basically throw that card to say, oh, wait a minute. He's throwing deep on me. I need to switch it up. He would switch to a card face down. If defense does it, offense has the same chance, but both of us are restricted with that card to either moving or taking an action. We can't do a half move and take an action. Okay. So it's a recovery maneuver, gives you some utility, but at the cost of some of your uh, abilities. Okay. All right, so you go ahead and do your thing. All right. Now I can't line up outside like that. You right? can. You, that's you fine. Can? As long as you're threatening him, you can be anywhere you okay. want to be. So it's a, as long as I'm threatening. Okay. So now we're going to both pick five cards. This is going to be our play call. Okay. The top card is going to be the one that's going to be the one that we're going to activate first. All right. Five cards. There. Where's the uh, other one? Oh, okay. There we go. I think we did. So we both have our five cards. Now at this point, snaps are automatic, but if you can trick your opponent by doing a little flick into flicking their card over first, you get to take two cards off their bench and put them on the discard pile. Okay. So trust me, it, it happens. So now we hike it. I thought you were going to try to pick me out. No, I, I'm later. I can't do it on the instruct. Maybe next time. Oh, play, okay. Right? All right, so we flip our cards over. Okay. So. The player with the faster card, which happens to be him, he has 44 out of 33, the skill, four big and three, gets okay. to pick who goes first. So he looks at the situation and surveys whether he thinks it's better for him to go first or whether he wants to see what I'm going to do. Okay. Uh, I'm going to let you go first. All right. So I'm going to take 32. I'm going to move two, which is half his movement rounded up. All right. And I'm going to block 58. So it's at a plus two already. I'm going to pull his card off the bench for plus three. Roll him up. Oh, now this is wonderful what has happened to me right now. So double ones. Not only is it a failure because three plus two is five. It's that's an six epic or less, failure. But the doubles means I'm also going to be knocked down on the block. So he gets to reverse the move to start with here, here, or here. Okay. And I'm going to be knocked down. Okay. So, that so he knocks happens? me down. He gets okay. to follow up for free. Right. And now he gets a free activation with any player on his team because of the failure before he even activates this guy. One that's free, right? right there, actually, yeah, that, that first one's free. One, two, two three, three, four, five, six. six. And right, now you're stuck because you got two guys threatening. <laughs> yep. All right. Now you get to use 44. Okay. So 44, I can hit. You can block him. So that's an even. A four blocking four is it even. You got plus one for the seven helping out. Right. You got 44 his card on the bench. You can pull it for another plus one. Uh, Bring up the plus two. All right, plus two. Okay. 
Yeah. Lost through, and we're gonna try to trust my my rolling uh, instincts. Which are seven, eight, nine. So it's yeah. successful, but it's yeah. that partial success. The seven, eight, or nine. So you can block in here, here, or here. Okay, I'm gonna block in there. All right. I want you to know I crushed him 21 to seven yesterday. <laughs> also, for some odd reason, when I was sitting playing the game, people came up and asked me about it. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. All right, so I'm gonna get. A half move now. I'm gonna actually peek at my cards because my play got busted up a little bit. So for my half move, can you peek at your cards? At your yes. Okay. Yes, you may. Um, I'm that helps because I don't even remember what I put. I down. know you <laughs> that I pick. So I'm actually gonna move one, two, take that hand off for three, three, four for my free half move. Okay. All right. So those two go to your discard pile. All right. And then uh, we pull our next play card up. Seven and seven, so we gotta roll off for it. Single right. die. You get to pick who goes first. I'm gonna go first. All right. Now, is he still frozen? You're uh, you're threatened. Right. So you could step out yeah, across the two. Step out. Right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go two. Okay. Three. All right. Correct. Yes. Four, five, five, six, because it's the second die. Six, in yeah. So six, you're locked in there, but because you're threatening me behind the line of scrimmage, yep. you get to take two cards off my bench. You can't look at them, but you just get to select two and they'll go in my discard pile. Okay, we'll take those two. Ooh. All right, so now it's my Yeah, guys. because I didn't go, because I went more than half my movement, I don't get get to take an action. Take an action, right. That's the only thing stopping That's the thing that, that, to yeah. So when you're planning this out, you really got to start thinking about half actions. Half actions. Okay. So here, I'm going to step out. Now, because I have the ball and I'm threatened by you, it's three to step out. Okay. So three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Now we're up to our next card. Okay. Oh, yep. a roll off where he could threaten me or he could maybe pull a five to try to slow me down after the actual play after I make my run so say that so basically you can either go with this guy which you can go with fun. that guy okay you would get to go first I'm gonna choose to go first because right. I'm gonna stream yeah. down the sideline right now the other move is, is after I get on the sideline, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you can use that one adjustment if you wanted to move him three and move this guy three to try to catch up. Right. So you've got a few different options. It depends on what his other card is and what he's got on, on his rack. All right. Or I can pull another card. You use, actually, you just use this guy's card. Yep. He moves half and any other player on your team. Actually, but remember, I'm gonna go first right now. Now if you swap this guy out, and pull the seven and force the roll, you could actually do your adjustment and crunch both those guys in, the seven and the five. I can pull the five. 
five out there. Which, if you do that, but remember, you can only move or take an action. You can't do a half move yeah. tackle if you read and react. So I, so I, I jogged myself pretty good right off the bat. Okay, that's right. No, so that's fine. Stick? I'm gonna stick with. It. All right, I'm gonna move in then. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Then with him, I can move six, right? Yes, sir. One. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Correct. Okay. All right. All right. So I'm seven, so I get to choose. Now, because he's just down. so you know, this guy is knocked down, so he doesn't threaten. Okay. So if you know if you step out here for two, three, four, five, six, seven to get you there, yep. up here would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You normally can't cross the diagonal, but he's right. knocked down. So you can get close. Alright, so I'll just move right there. Alright. Okay. For me it was 61. I'm just gonna move um, one, two, three, four. That's my guy. Oh, whoa, you're right. My 61's back here. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. All right, so now that our, we call the first five cards are our play call. Okay. We call that, we execute the play. Now we just go one-to-one -one off the bench. So we just pick up one card at a time and reveal as we go. So now we make reads on the fly based on what's happening in the field. Gotcha. All right, so you have the faster guy. Yep. I'm gonna go first. I would. Three. And I would probably, one, two, three, four. I would probably go up high yeah. just in case I generate a free activation. You wanna force me to go through more one, spots. One, two, two, three, four, five, seven. Here we go. So with 47, I'm gonna step out here for two. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna block him at plus one, plus two, and that's it. That's the best I got. Okay. Six, seven, eight. Eight. So I'm successful, but that's going to give you a half move with one of your guys rounded up. No, I couldn't hit him. Can't tackle, but you can't can get another guy in threatening him. Okay. Which would be there. Yeah. And then we go to the next card. Uh, hold on here. Um, half move would be four rounded up. One, two, three. Yeah, you'd be stuck. Yeah. Plus, this way, you had it, right? Yeah. And this makes me move six to here, six to here, six to here, because it's three for yeah. guy threatening when I got the ball. So now I'm just, but I use the special abilities. I'm, I'm crunched. Okay. I have to grind it out, best case scenario. All right, I get it. I'm starting to get it now. And we still have a minute a minute to figure things out, too. Yeah, we're still, we're going, we're going here. All right. Yeah, 
I need the same thing. Six, seven, eight. You got it. Yeah. So at that point, we take it up here, suck it down. He's tackled outside the hash mark, so we spot it on the inside. All your cards go back to the bench, and we do it all again. Unbelievable. Cool, right? That's cool. And I would set up right at that point. I would set up, yeah. I would. Now, when, when we knocked him out, when I, I tackle him here, the yep. ball comes over how much? It, if you tackle on this side of the field, on this side of the hash mark, oh, so you, you got to go inside, inside, inside the just hash mark. Just to the mark. inside. And Brilliant. if he's tackled in here, just in the center of the field. Brilliant. So, so get, I would set up the play on the hash mark. Right, which it's just is a second. Brilliant. I'm on offense still. So I would come up and you have four downs to score. Period. Not for not for a first down. So it's second down, and that since it was a running play, puts two on the clock. If it's a passing play, or you run out of bounds, or kick a field goal, it's only one on the clock. Okay. So we go just like that. So if I was able to knock the ball loose uh, three you, more times, if you if you had rolled doubles on that, yeah, that would have been it would have been a fumble, and then it would have gotten live right there. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Wow, this is fantastic. Guys, if anything, take a look. It's The Kickstarter page is still up. Kickstarter People page can is get still a hold up. of you. Yeah, we got, we got the video up there. Uh, I'm, you can check out uh, bombshell-games.com. That's what we're looking at for. the Brent Spivey. Uh, go on Board Game Geek and look at the game page. We've got a big mega thread with, I think, over 1,200 posts. Guys are making all of their stuff. There's playbooks. People mm -hmm. running solo seasons. You can play the game solo. Um, yeah, it's pretty epic. Check it out. It's available right now on Funnigan Games, available on Amazon. Um, if you're in the Canada or the EU, UK, contact me directly on Board Game Geek and we can get something worked out from our fulfillment centers there. But uh, yeah, check it out. Super, super good community. Ask me anything you want to know and uh, we'll get you hooked up. And even if you just want to leave something in the comments, Brent will be checking this out and uh, answering any comments that you have, anything that you, any questions you have. We will uh, do this. Uh, also, we're going to be doing a live play when I get back from Historicon. As you guys know, I'm going. But uh, we'll be doing this up and uh, supporting it real well. I really like this. This, is, right, this is working into my top ten of all time. Ooh, I love it. <laughs> I right. love it. Thank you, my friend. Hey, thank you, man. No problem. And that's it. And we'll check out more of the con. Later. Later.